Greetings, this is Ty Brown with Athletic Director U, and I'm joined here with Zach Marides. He is the CEO of Teamworks, and Jim Caval, who's the CEO of Influencer, and we will talk about their partnership that was just announced. Greetings, gentlemen, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having us. Awesome to be here. Now, guys, I'll be honest with you. I am applying to uh, MBA programs, right? So I want to learn a little bit about this thing you guys hear, this merger, this acquisition, this partnership. So I may ask, ask some questions that I don't know if our audience would be uh, understand why I'm asking, but I am legit curious about this whole situation. I'll start with you, Zach. The purpose, well, both you guys, the purpose of both of your organizations ties to maybe not verbatim how I said, but serving student athletes, right? And um, Zach, as you've seen, influence or grow. Over the last two years, we see it grow in D1 ticker every day, new, new, uh, new partnership, signing up with new people. Tell me about why you were interested in forming a partnership with Influencer in terms of what you guys have going on now, as you've been watching the last couple of years. Yeah, I mean, you know, so you, you said it, you know, our, our mission uh, and our mission statement is to engage and empower athletes, which, you know, you, you, can, you can simplify that down to, we're here to serve athletes. And you know, athletes are really who we think of as our customer. And like any company, you know, in order to serve our customers, we need to be talking to them frequently. We need to be learning from them uh, because their needs are not static. And you know, what became clear to us over the last year or so is that you know, the current generation of elite athletes, um, the way that they not only experience the world, um, but the way that they express themselves has changed, is different than prior generations. And you know, simply put, social media is their voice. Uh, it's how they communicate um, their life, what's happening in their life, big things, little things. Um, it's how they communicate what they care about. And what became clear to us was that you know, for many of these athletes that we talked to, their athletic experience was an enormous part of their life, but a very small part of their presence on social media. Um, you know, their ability to tell the story of what was happening on the field, in the weight room, you know, on the practice field was limited. And you know, as we talked with a lot of our partners, the teams and the universities that, that also serve these athletes, they too wanted to bridge the gap of trying to help these athletes get access to the thousands of pictures and videos that are captured during their, their practices, during their games and other events so that they can tell their story. And, you know, we, we started like, you know, for us, technology is the solution, everything, right? And, um, but I think this was inherently a technological problem. We started to talk with some of our partners that were trying to solve this problem. And while there were a number of companies that I think were attempting a solution, there was just one company that we kept coming up, uh, you know, coming to that was having success. And lo and behold, the reason they were having success was because their whole thesis was put the athlete first, right? Instead of starting with, what does the school want? What does the media rights holder want? Right. What do the athletes want? And how do we make it is, how do we focus on delivering to them what they want? And then, then of course you see incredible engagement. So when we started sitting back saying, hey, we wanna help our, our partners solve this problem in mass, it was just one choice. I mean, it, you know, and, and it, it's amazing. I mean, Jim and I have talked about this multiple times as we've gone through this whole process. The, the commonalities between the two companies, it's eerie, the founding story. You know, I mean, the, the focus of the business, the true north is exactly the same, right? We're putting the athletes first. That's the lens through which we look at every decision. I, I can't tell you how much that helps in terms of trying to align our teams. Like we, we have the same argument settler in both companies. Like mm -hmm. we need to know what to do, what's right for the athlete, right? Um, and so, you know, it, 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 it was kind of, you know, there's not many things in life that are easy, but it felt easy. It felt like the logical conclusion. Now, you know, I think uh, it, what's going to be a great challenge to, to tackle together is how do we quickly get the solution in the hands of everybody that can help? How do we solve that problem quickly? Right. All right. Jim, your, your thoughts, of course, been around a lot longer. I, I worked for the American Football Coaches Association for a long time, and I saw when Zach here started the business, saw him talking to football operations director. I've seen it grow over the years. Now I work closely with athletic directors, so you see where the business has gone. 
seen when you were involved with uh, athletic director you and you see it grow, listen to podcasts, see you on some of the videos. Talk to me about why when the conversation started, right? Why you were interested in the conversation and in this partnership? You know, for me, um, this whole roller coaster of entrepreneurship is something that I've uh, had a, uh, a sick addiction to since college, since I played college baseball and I started my first business. I say sick addiction because it is a roller coaster and um, there's many days that you'll just simply question yourself no matter what you're doing. But what I've realized about entrepreneurship is the magic is not in the idea, it's in the execution. Because the idea is just the starting point. But as you execute and you learn what the market will write a check for, what the market will use, what the market will do with your product, you learn from them what your product needs to become, what your culture should be rallied around, and ultimately what your true north should be, as Zach was saying. And for me, making the true north my passion, which is athletes, as a former athlete, as a guy who loves to be around youth, college and professional sports as much as I can, I'm obsessed with it. Um, I got to merge the two together entrepreneurship and that passion of athletes with influencer. And, um, and so as I did that, I met Zach. It was crazy how we met. I was at a job fair in Birmingham, Alabama, where we're based. And one of his former college teammates happened to be there uh, recruiting for his company and uh, overheard me talking about influencer, which by the way, I didn't even know if I was gonna launch at that point. I was just interviewing young talent to see if there might be some hires I would make if I decided to launch Influencer. And uh, not only uh, does he come over and introduce himself, he introduces me to Zach through an email. Zach responded and we've had a relationship ever since. So um, the two years from me starting Influencer to today have also been the two years that I've built a relationship with Zach through his mentorship, through him always being able to answer the phone, call me back, email me back. Um, when I raised capital, he was one of the first people to say, not only do I wanna invest, but I wanna help you with that raise so that it goes smoothly and doesn't distract your operation. He's just always been there. So we've got to develop a relationship with no pure motive except for rising tides lifts all boats, let's help athletes. And through doing that, we saw, man, there could be something more here. And it really, um, you know, the rubber really met the road with all that this summer at my storyteller conference that my team and I put on um, at Influencer, where Zach opened it up, did his awesome Why Athletes Matter talk, which if you haven't seen it, you need to look it up on Twitter or on Teamworks website's awesome talk, and uh, got me on stage doing the uh, New Zealand All Blacks uh, battle cry, <laughs> battle cry with it. him. Um, but after that event, it was just like, hey, you know, I know you want to go take the normal route that we've taken at Teamworks, which is raising a Series A and then a Series B and venture capital. And, and that's a great route, but here's an alternate route that we're actually in a position to do with you because of where we are. We've already done a Series A and a Series B, and you could have an operationally minded board instead of maybe a more finance minded board and, um, and really have... Um, firepower behind what you are already building. And that's where I started to listen and explore and how we got to where we are today. Right. It's a, it, that's, a, that's an interesting concept, especially because you started a conversation saying you were entrepreneurial minded from the beginning, right? So he talks to you about, hey, think about this different direction. Right? Yeah. How long of a thought process was that for you to think about how you started, think about where you come to, and now this is a a direction where as an entrepreneur you might want to go? Yeah, right, but. you know, it's a good question. I, I think my previous experiences in business um, taught me that team and people are the only way to accomplish maximum impact. And so you can have a lifestyle business. There's a lot of great ideas I could tell you about that I've seen people execute on and, you know, build a business where they're making 500,000, maybe even a million bucks cash a year and um, they're doing great. But um, they have a small team and, and, you know, people are not the center of how they accomplish that. For us, we want to scale something. I, I want to impact, we, have, we impact 10,000 athletes as of today. I want to impact 100,000 in the next three years. And um, I want to launch new revenue streams for them that we can help streamline. I want to help college athletic directors who are freaking out about fair pay to play to stop fighting against it, but reality is it's going to happen. I wanna help them track it and be in front of it and be innovative while also helping the athletes be protected, right? If I'm gonna accomplish all that, those are all impact things. Do they connect to value? Do they connect to valuation? Do they connect to um, shareholder value? 
value? Yes, but that's not what I'm thinking about first. That's the byproduct of impact. And so for me, learned in, in my last business, um, which was out of sports in fitness, but I learned how great it was to have a co-founder with me every day. I learned how great it was to have an amazing leadership team, etc. And this guy's built one and I've built one. I mean, all you gotta do is look at my team picture for influencer and see that I'm a lucky man with a lot of people who are smarter and um, come from all different walks of life and have come around this business to rally and get it to where it is. And now we have a team about five times bigger that we get to do it together with every day. Yeah. And that's like so exciting. And that's why I was open to this was this guy and his leadership team and really just his whole team being focused and rallied around the same true north, which is athletes, right. athletes, and athletes. You know, and I'll speak to that too, because I think Jim, you and I, we had a relationship. We knew like, oh, I'd love to work together. But the unknown, right, is the team. And the thing that I'll just speak to is when we first got the two teams together, I mean, you, you know, when you're doing something like this, you have your deal team. So you've got the executives on both ends. And when we first brought them together, the thing that struck me, and I think, you know, to Jim's point, both teams, we got people from all walks of life, from, you know, all over the country, we got some folks from other countries. Um, but what they all have in common, what struck me was the humility of both teams. Yeah. Like immediately came to the table and my, my team saying to Jim's team and Jim's team saying to our team, what can we learn from each other? You know, you guys have done some different things. You've done some things in different ways. There was zero, you know, territorial. There was none of that. It was 100%. How can we learn? How can we grow from each other? And I think, you know, if there's something to take away from this interview, too, when you talk about building a team, optimize for humility. Because, I mean, the two teams, I mean, are running together fast. And I think any time that you're bringing two groups of people together, you know, you're always worried about, like, you know, what, how are the cultures going to yeah. come together? And I think, you know there's a the one thing that allows you to take the good from each is having that common thread of humility and and really a desire to learn i mean it comes from jim you sit down with him he wants to learn like every time i met with him he's like hammering me with questions and then i'm just telling him you know well we figure this out because we did every rig wrong possible so you know you know the rented scar tissue but i think just having that mind of i'm not done how can I get better every single day? And it just emanates from his team, and I think it's the reason our two teams came together so well. Right, right. When, you, when you talk about, Jim, you guys, we're all former student athletes, right? Yeah. And in, in, your, in your lecture on the importance of athletes, and you talked about social media, the way they communicate, those things may change. But when you talk about team, and you talk about leadership, sure. and you talk about the synergy of it all, right? It doesn't change, right? And when you talk about the true north, how you called it, the purpose, the, the reason why we're here, why do we do what we do doesn't change, so it allows everybody to look at that, and then you gotta work out the minutia beyond that. And so I, I assume that's what you're talking about as you've got to know each other over the last couple of years. We, we also have, so that, that's a great point, the, the whole idea of being former athletes and understanding team and we versus I. Um, and, and I think for me, in this whole process that I've had to go through to think about my family, my shareholders who have invested in this company to this point, my employees, I had to think about the reality of what it would be like coming under the Teamworks umbrella. Right. Because there's a risk there, right? For influencer, there's a risk of, okay, um, you know, how do we operate differently? I mean, we, we you know, made a decision, we're still gonna have our own headquarters in Birmingham, and we're still gonna build some satellite offices here in Dallas and LA, and um, at the same time, um, we're gonna benefit from a cash investment and an operational set of efficiencies from Teamworks that's gonna help us grow faster, along with their 3,000 clients and 100,000 athletes that we don't have, right? And so, I have to think about all that, think about the numbers of it, but also think about the realities of stories I know. I know um, good and bad, right? Like, I, I, my two favorite barbecue restaurants, One's back home in New York, and one's based down in Birmingham. Uh, they did a merger recently, and uh, the two executive chefs got real romantic, you know, and they thought it was gonna be amazing, but they didn't think about all the other stuff, the culture fit, the product fit, all those things, and it was an absolute disaster, right? Then I look at guys like Clay Thompson, who um, could play anywhere in the NBA, be the number one player in most teams, but is willing to be the second or third guy on the championship team. And I look at Zach and I look at me and I feel like we really just wanna bring the smartest and most talented people around us as possible 
to achieve the purpose, which is to serve athletes. And we know everything else will work itself out, whether it's shareholder value, employee uh, experience, everything. And, and so I think we're more on the Clay Thompson side of things. Um, and that's how we're looking at this is like, let's build a dream team. And um, it doesn't even have to stop with these two companies and these two products. There's a lot of great sports tech out there. We joke, you know, everybody in sports should have Teamworks because it runs their off the field or off the court life. Travel itinerary, handbook, playbook, grades, attendance, everything. And so it's kind of like Gmail. And a lot of people that have Gmail have YouTube. And they use the same login. And that's what influencer is. And there's a lot more than just YouTube and Gmail. There's ways and Google Maps and Google Calendar. And we wanna go find all that. That's the vision Zach shared with me that got me so excited is like, we wanna get the best sports tech in the hands of athletes more and more every day so that they are optimal on the field and off the field, they're on autopilot. Right. When you, when you talk about uh, purpose, when you talk about core values, you talk about mission, uh, you get into core values on how you execute and make decisions to execute the purpose, right? I imagine they probably weren't the same for both companies. So the research in that and both of you guys looking and you looking here and you looking here, tell me about how you align those or how they align now or will they align? Tell me about that part of the whole coming together. I mean, I, I'll start, I'll let you kind of build on it, but you know, I think that's one of the synergies that was just there when we started looking is the fact that both of our missions, you whittle them down and it's we're serving the athlete. Right. And so, you know, that, I, I, I got to be honest and tell you, I don't know if, you know, we could, it could be a great technology merger and everything, but I don't believe if, if that piece hadn't been there, if this would have really happened because it, that in and of itself would have put the companies at odds because we're not, we don't have the same angle because, and, and I say that because Jim has done, you know, what he was just describing is he's all about accomplishing the mission, not about, you know, the same thing for me. I, I, we got to rewire this industry. We got to. We have to build a better technological base for this industry, right? right? It, it, if we're being frank, it's inefficient today. And the more efficient this industry becomes, the better this industry becomes at serving those athletes that play such a critical role in our society, right? But because he's all about the mission, I'm all about the mission, and we've built teams that are all about the mission. If those two missions didn't have the same endpoint, because of the teams that we have, I don't know if it would have worked. And so I, I think that part was there. You know, they have their core values, we have our core values, and I think, you know, the, the one common thread between the two of them that I know is the, the humility component. And I think a lot of it too is, you know, when, it's interesting because for us, and I'll, I'll let you speak to your process, but our core values are something that we revisit. We revisit them on a quarterly basis. Um, you know, it, and, and I think core values, you know, it's a little bit of expressing who you are, but also expressing maybe where the organization you know, what it need, you know, as we look forward, um, what do we need to get where we're going? And what attributes do we need in the people that we need to bring on at this point in time to get there? And sometimes, it, you know, what you need, um, you know, for the first part of the journey evolves over time. And sometimes you change those core values um, based upon where you're going because you need to start encouraging new behavior. You need to start, you know, the folks, the folks that are with you need to start working new muscles. Um, but it's something that we evaluate as a company every quarter and, and we, we grow and evolve. Which is interesting, but the purpose always stays the same. Right? That's right. right? And purpose there, never changes. There are people that would disagree with changing core values, but I, I think they may be, some people may confuse purpose with their core values and their mission of why they're doing what they do in terms of that, but I think that's interesting. Well, I, and I'll, give you a, great, I'll give you a perfect example. I mean, in the early days, you know, it wasn't a written core value, but it was probably an unspoken one was grind 24 seven, 365. Right. Well, guess what? That's sustainable when you're a bunch of kids out of college, but now, you know, we'll burn out. Yeah. And, and, you know, we got, we got a lot of people that are having kids. You know, we, we've got families that we need to spend time with. That's, and I'm gonna just tell you right now, anybody that's out there doing anything, there's nothing more important than investing in your family. Nothing, right? And, you know, and so we're at a different stage as a company where, you know, that what spoken or unspoken that core values out because what we're talking about now is sustainable high performance right um so i think that's an example of a changing core value it's not that like i'm going to be honest with you honesty is one of our core values that's it's not ever going away right we're never going to have a stage of the business where honesty is not a core value um but you know work yourself to the bone that may have been a core value the first few years it's not today 
the way I look at core values as well, and, and I agree with a lot of what Zach said, you know, I've never really thought about adding them, but it is something that we've done in each business that I've been a part of running is continuously put the leadership team um, in charge of evaluating them because really they're the who. They define the who of your organization. You've got the why, that's your purpose, should never change, right? We've been talking about that this whole interview. We exist to serve storytellers, AKA athletes. Um, and then you got the what, which we do change every one to three years. It's our BHAG, it's the mission. And so we just accomplished our what that we set when we started the business two years ago, and that was to serve 10,000 athletes with our product. And we'll set a new what, probably 100,000 athletes, right? 150. Okay, yeah. okay. All right, so <laughs> he's always sharpening me. That's why I love him. And so, and so that can change. And then the core values, the, the, way, the way I like to define it, and I got this, I'm stealing this from a tech CEO who taught me this years ago. You know, everybody's different. You might have 33 core values, you have 27, I have uh, 13, but we share the eight that this company's about. The, the five that I have in addition to those eight make me unique. The 20 that you have at this company, but we are gonna share these eight, we're gonna evaluate to them, we're not gonna be perfect, we're gonna call each other out when we break them, we're gonna celebrate people when they get them right. I mean, you know, today I was talking about the be the blessing core value in our company because we have an opportunity to, um, with this deal, be the blessing to more athletes. Um, and we also have the opportunity to be the blessing personally because a lot of people on my team are gonna win from this. Um, and it's exciting for me to see them blessed and I want them to bless others. I think that's really a big part of our business. And so seeing the core values come to life and not just be a t-shirt is huge. And you've gotta, as the CEO, bring them up, evaluate them with your leadership team, celebrate them every Monday in your weekly meeting or whenever that is, so that people feel the tangible nature of these core values and see that, man, this really is our DNA. Right. This really is we live who this, right? we are. We live this. I'll ask this last question and then we'll wrap. Um, one of the, the key things I think leaders should ask themselves, introspective leadership, right, which I know you do a whole lot of, is, is working for me more than just another paycheck? Right, And I know you put a lot of your staff through a lot of professional development, you do a lot of those things, and you have your, your conference there, and I, I think the nature of who you guys serve, you actually have to constantly be evolving and constantly learning. Talk about that aspect of, of development for your staff and why working for you, and why even this synergy will be more than just a pay, paycheck for the people who work for you too. You know, I mean, I, I think that's, that's one of the things I hope, you know, as we talk about what can the companies learn from each other, I think, you know, again, I mean, you sit next to Jim right now. I mean, like, he gets me fired up. He brings great energy. He brings great passion. I think he's built an incredibly strong culture. I think he's got, done some things in terms of firming up that culture and embedding it in the organization that we can learn. That And, and, and frankly, you know, brings the energy of a 20-person company, a tight-knit, that you want to hang on to as long as you can when you're 100, 200, 300-person company. Um, but I also think, you know, there's some things that we've done and, and we've done a lot of experimentation around developing the whole person. You know, we have a program called Optimum where, you know, we're, we're focused on everything outside of the paycheck. Um, you know, what's your emotional health? Um, you know, what's your mental health, uh, your cognitive health? Um, are, you, are you investing in those two things? What's your, you know, are you taking time to every single day to invest in what you're eating? To, and that's more than sitting and eating. Are you taking time out of your day to plan what you're gonna eat? Are you taking time out of your day to hydrate? Um, you know, and I think there's some programs that we've developed for our employees that I hope we can we can take to influencer and, and support their employees in that way as well. But I mean, at the end of the day, what you want is you want, because you know, somebody, one of my mentors said to me, people will be tough if they have a reason to be tough, right? And so every company goes through things that are difficult, whether they're, whether they're, you're going through rough times or you're going through a difficult mission. Um, but there are times where we're gonna ask people to go above and beyond and do really difficult things. And you know, some people will do that because they're passionate about the mission, but all people will do it if they know that you care about them. And I think that's the most important thing. Does the, com does the company communicate caring, right, through its actions? Um, and it's, because it, it, it's more than just say, you know, saying we care or having the benefits. It's, you know, what happens when somebody in the company's having a crisis? And how do you lead in that moment? 
because how I respond to that is how everybody else, all the other managers, everybody else will respond to it. What do we do to rally around and create support? Um, but I think when you have that caring relationship, just like a person to person, a company to a person, if I care deeply about you and I'm investing in you and when you have a moment of crisis, I'm there for you. And then there's that time where the company says, we need you. You're there for them. And so I think, you know, it, but these are all things too that you learn in the locker room, right? You look at some of the most amazing teams that do incredible things on the field, on the court, and, the, you know, it's because, you know, at the end of the day, it's not a group of individuals that come together for a moment for individuals, you know, in order to have individual success. It's because they're there because that team has cared for them and they care for that team. And it's this amazing symbiotic relationship where they'll fight to death, right, to deliver. And I, so I think it, you know, it's amazing, but so much goes into, executing a, a successful business. And a lot of times people don't think about um, the caring part, the part where you go, how do, I, how do I make sure that every single person that comes into this organization leaves the best version of themselves, right? And what I love about the name of the program is, I think for, for me, it touches on something that's been mentioned a few times in this, this video is, um, you know, efficiency, uh, it's called optimum, right? Yep. So like being optimal is um, a woman who can get something done in six hours, what it takes somebody else to get done in 10 hours and can use those four extra hours she has because of how optimal she is to work out, eat well, and be there with her family. That is optimal to me. And our core value, be intentional, is something I talk about with my team all the time because I don't really care if you're here from eight to eight. I would rather you be here from nine to four and get a workout in before you come in and leave early, not have to go work out, but be able to get home to get your kids off the bus and have a great dinner together, right? There's a holistic balance opportunity that in sports we all struggle with because when you work in sports, nights and weekends are the norm and people wear them like a badge. Just hit my mic, sorry about yeah. that, but they wear them like a badge. And, and we've got to change that. We've got to figure out how um, everybody covers the nights and weekends as part of what they do, but everybody has a plan that's intentional, that's beyond just their work. Um, because you know what? LeBron's a great athlete, but for the two hours he's on the court, two and a half hours he's on the court, the reason he's so great is because of the 10 hours, yeah. uh, really the 24 hours where he slept for 10 and um, he treated himself the right way in the locker room and he eats meticulously and he doesn't drink and he doesn't go out and stay up, late, right? It's that that makes LeBron great in the two and a half hours. Well, and, and you know, you, you raise an excellent point, which is, you know, our, at, at, at Teamworks and at Influencer, we're thought workers, right? Well, your brain is, it's a part of a larger biological system and that engineer, that quits smoking, gets an extra hour of sleep a night and hydrates properly, they're gonna produce better thoughts. Yeah. And you know, and I think again, you know, you bring up the industry that we're in, it's amazing sometimes to watch the amount of investment we make in the athletes themselves, making sure they're sleeping right, eating right, recovering. Um, and yet the folks that are working in the industry aren't, aren't investing in themselves in the same way. Well, those, those coaches, they're thought workers. They gotta call the right play, right? They gotta pick the right recruits. You know, they have to make decisions every single day. And at the end of the day, from our perspective, we'd rather you take an hour and a half of company time, two hours to invest in yourself because you're gonna make better decisions for the time that we have you. And, and I think it's, you know, it's one of those things that it's the right thing to do, but the end result is better business outcomes, yeah. right? And so you know, I think that's, uh, as we talk, and, and you, you listen to the two of us here, I mean, again, it's another thing where it's like, we're on the same page. Yeah. Right? And, yeah, we and, didn't and, plan this. This is this but it's back. but it's also it's like tell me what you're doing. I'll tell you what I'm doing. Let's put them together. You know, and that's there's just I think there and and I think that's Jim and I getting to know each other for the last two years. You know, is it any big surprise that you know a Greek guy from Chicago, an Italian guy from Syracuse, former student athletes, we might have a few things in common, and we might have ended up you know building similar companies with some, down south, down south, not in the Bay, you know, I mean, but it, it's just, you know, and, and I think it, the synergies from day one, when we even started talking about this, I mean, it's just, it's just been amazing. And, uh, and I think, you know, where you're really going to see the results is what we do in the industry and what we do for the people that we serve. You, you know, you guys will be successful at that, especially based on the mind states you guys have. Right. I really appreciate you guys joining. This has been a great conversation. Thanks for having us. Thanks, man.
That was Zach Maridis. He is the CEO at Teamworks and Jim Caviles, the CEO at Influencer. And of course, this is Ty Brown with Athletic Director U. And keep in mind, the role of a leader is to create and maintain an environment that people want to be a part of. And as always, be better tomorrow than you are today.